Welcome back. Andre is mine. We're going to hop into it. Today, we're going to talk trading and some things that I think are affecting the Black community. If you don't want to tune in for that, actually, you should tune into it because I'm going to talk about the judgment of Black people and how some people's opinion on the state of the Black community, they should be quiet about it. And what else is on my mind? There's some development stuff, but nothing, nothing, nothing crazy. All right, you ready? Segment one, trading rant. I'm a known proponent that is just anti-smart money concepts because they are not smart. Now, the reason that I'm saying they're not smart simply is because they're not based in anything that the group that people call smart money does. Smart money is a term coined by losers. I will tell you that when you talk to big guys and girls who trade on that grand scale, they say Wall Street, Main Street, right? Main Street is usually late to the party. Well, Wall Street has the edge. And that's true. And to put this in perspective, one of the big things that Main Street is heavy on is technical analysis. The one thing that Wall Street's heavy on is transaction cost analysis. The fixed levels, highs, lows, right? And there's other levels that are just as important. Tracking price, Not necessarily price action, but tracking price and prices and dealing and understanding the auction process. This is something that retail or Main Street is not doing. And at some point, no one's questioning this. And you you all know that definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Main Street's insane. Fear holds Main Street back. And then by the time they overcome the fear or kind of swallow the fear, it's way too late. I don't need these, at least not right now. Main Street is typically behind, and it's not just trading. You look at car markets, right? They buy overpriced cars. Look at the housing market. A lot of people want to start investing in real estate when it's too late. Look at the dot-com bubble where everyone was a real estate investor, bought a crap ton of houses. Some of you guys may be too young to remember this, but in 2000, 2000 2001, 2002, something, somewhere around there, every. I remember driving past regular everyday houses and there was a Ferrari, a Lamborghini, uh, Mercedes Benz is outside of normal ass houses. And then you go back a few months later, foreclosure. It was the dot-com bubble. They made money. They held on for too long thinking that, oh, this is going to last forever. And it doesn't, right? You have to adjust. Like your wealth can last forever. But again, if you're not smart about your tactics, if you have no strategy, then what is the point? You have to be strategic in this investing world. My my father's a real estate investor um, who, who made it from nothing, right? He came up before me. Uh, he came up at later at a later age in life. And that's another problem with Main Street. They think they have to have it now. My dad didn't really crack the real estate code into his 40s. And I want to say mid to late forties. And it was amazing to see, again, we're from Chicago. We're from the hood where gunshots put you to sleep, right? That that's a hardcore reality. We would sit outside and witness some dumb stuff. It wasn't safe to walk to the corner store. And if he can do it, you can do it. This is why you'll often hear me say that my heroes aren't on TV. My heroes are everyday folk. My parents are my heroes, right? The guy in the shirt, Bruce Lee. It's one of my heroes, but I say that to say Main Street, just the whole ideology is wrong because it's really just about strategy, knowing when to get in, when to get out. And again, that's a huge, huge problem. So tying, tying this in the trading and it's applicable of, of any type of success scheme. Scheme is probably not the right word, but it's applicable in the, the arena of success. Everybody wants to learn, 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 then apply. And what you're learning from someone else is typically from someone who's making money, selling you the secret sauce. There are very few people who generally care enough to help at reasonable prices, right? So I say that to say this, the whole idea of someone saying, oh, I know what smart money does. I train smart money. 
BS because what you'll what you'll find when you actually study what institutional traders do, which what, what banks do, banks don't make money trading, banks make money dealing. Fun fact, I think around 2017, 2018, banks laid off a lot of traders. And I'm talking heavily educated traders who couldn't get it together. And so they went back to their original business model, which was making money dealing to the bigger traders. And what they do, they do what we should do as smaller retail investors is swim on the belly of the shark, eat the crumbs, right? This is what they do. They follow the order book. Very, very simple. They have that edge. And let's bring it back to Main Street versus Wall Street. What Main Street's doing is they're looking for the technical pattern, the cup and handle, the double top, the double bottom. You know, all that's a function of price highs and lows. And by the time you're getting in, it's too late. You get wicked out, price goes your way. You think it's manipulated, but it's not. You're simply late to the party because all the overly technical, the smart money concepts, they don't really give you an edge. Main Street versus Wall Street. Wall Street is not against Main Street. They're not even looking or thinking about the average everyday trader investor. They're looking at their objectives. What can they do to hit their numbers on the day, the week, the month, the quarter, the year, balancing the books? This is what actually goes on in that world. But since it's clouded in secrecy because people are signed to lifetime non-disclosure agreements, you'll never know unless you actually do the research or go to school, get the education, and then tap in. And I was lucky enough to learn from someone who had been on both sides and did their own thing, did their own research. Actually, two people, three, if, yeah, three. <laughs> and taught me things. They didn't teach me price. They taught me bid offer exhaustion. That's Chris, Steve, and the other person who I cannot mention. But everything else, everything outside of that was me, is me, is my research. So I um, I want to dispel that myth. Now, transitioning. Let's talk about the Black community and the politics around Black community. I come from a family of Black brothers, Black sisters. I'm the oldest of a lot of us. And coming up in impoverished areas, coming up in areas of poverty, what you see is poverty is non-discriminatory. Poverty does not care what color, race, creed, religious belief. It doesn't care. I grew up around poor Asian people, poor white people, poor Mexican people. Poverty does not discriminate. Crime Crime does not discriminate. Crime tends to run in groups. But a lot of times, especially living here in the States, the face of crime is me, black guy, right? Someone that looks like my brother. Someone that looks like my sister. Scammers, right? But on the actual ground where the people are, it's every single race, every single creed, every single religious belief. It's non-discriminatory. I was scrolling through social media and saw a post saying that statistically black people are the low of the low. You shouldn't date one. You shouldn't do business with one simply because statistically you're going to get fucked. Pissed me off because you're looking at a statistic. Now, let me back this by saying in my teenage years, I did political surveys. I know how this works. I also know Gavin Newsom is eventually going to run for president because in those studies that we did in 2002, it was Gavin Newsom for governor of California. And then one of the final questions was Gavin Newsom on a potential presidential run. So what we did was we, we surveyed one section of the city, one section of the city, and mostly the Democrats who were registered to vote in that section of the city. And then you see on the news, 80% of Democrats in, in California plan to vote for Gavin Newsom for governor of California and will potentially support a future presidential run. This is how that's done. Numbers don't lie, but numbers are misleading. The sample is what's important. So you got to ask yourself, where is the sample coming from? You can't trust these surveys. None whatsoever. You can't trust the news because the, there, there's more clicks on a black guy in 
in his mugshot or her mugshot, that's what gets the clicks because that's what feeds the fear. None of my brothers and sisters are criminals. None of my brothers and sisters are deadbeat parents. None of my friends are deadbeat parents. None of my friends are criminals. And we all came up in the same fucking area. One of my friends who had it super rough, loved this dude to death. He's seen me at my best. I've seen him at his best. We've seen each other at, at our worst. We've been through thick and thin together. He found success working for a big local company. Got a nice house in the suburbs. Two kids. Family man. Another one of my friends. One of my best fucking friends. Bought a house in a nice area of town. Works hard. Takes care of his kids. Supports his wife. Gets his kids from school. Soccer practice. While working a job. And went back and graduated from college in his 40s. This is what's not being shown about our community. And there's countless numbers of this not being shown. They're not going to show you a Brown University college ceremony. You're not going to see a Morehouse college ceremony. You're not going to see anything from an HBCU. You're going to see the lowest of the low on the totem pole. But they typically just show one face, the faces that look like mine. And I'm tired of it. We are not the low of the low. Without trying to sound like a black supremacist, a lot of the shit that people enjoy today have come from my people. I have family who works in the music industry, big time music execs. You, you, you can't tell me that we as a people are worthless. And then when you when you start to look at culture and style, let's take hip hop for example. Most pop stations won't play the hip hop version of a record. Let's say Taylor Swift for example, Bad Blood. They and on most radio stations that are pop, they will not play the Kendrick Lamar part, right? They'll just do an inter uh, an extended bridge from the song. But on the urban stations, they'll play that and play the Kendrick part. But what are they doing? They're looking to reach the black audience, right? Because they put Kendrick on it. Oh, let me, let me hear what Kendrick has to say on this. That's an example of how people are manipulated. And it's a known known. What's wrong with introducing Kendrick Lamar to the pop side of music? What's wrong with that? It's frowned upon. And this is, I'm not going to say that. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is question that. And then people who, who oh, you're, you guys are all criminals and all. Okay, see where you're coming from because you see from the news. I remember being 13, 14, walking to Target walking on the sidewalk, minding my business. And this old lady looks over, sees me, locks her door. I'm not thinking about this lady. Walking through parking lots and grocery stores, people look at me and they lock their doors. <laughs> and sometimes I want to say, do you know who the fuck I am? Right? The ego wants to come out. Like, and I never would verbalize this to another human being, but these are thoughts that go to my head. It's like, I probably make more money in one day than you make in three months. But what does that do? That doesn't, that just puts us back further, right? Because it's not about who you are economically. It's about who you are on the inside. A lot of times me and my wife go to stores and you will see plain clothes security people following us. And I turn around, I'm like, you don't have to follow me. I'm not selling anything. I ask my wife, she'll validate that. Or I'll be like, oh, that guy's following us. I'm in the store with my kids. I don't, I don't have time to steal anything. I didn't work hard to get to where I'm at to steal anything from your stupid store. So it starts with the youth. Instead of the government sending all this money to Ukraine, fighting a war that's not going to do anything for us, why not reinvest in the impoverished community? Because again, it's capitalism, right? The people are the product of the business that is Washington, D.C. Why not invest in your people? Oh, you'll have more workers, right? You'll make more money, aka taxes. Why not do that? So I say that to say, stop discriminating against people, especially us people, because we have more to offer than you choose to see. And even in the trading community, I've had someone tell me, there's no way a black guy can trade like this. Have you heard of Bob Johnson, venture capital? <laughs> you, can't, you can't tell me that I can't do something and do it better than you. I had a conversation with one of my friends in the group. We got into this topic of, of race and he wanted to understand how it is to live in the skin. He said, hey, if you and I went for a job, sorry, let's say you and I went to a job, we were looking for a job at an investment bank. 
And there were two positions, one for trader, one for janitor. And you went for the janitor job and I was going for the trader position, right? He's a very nice looking man, wears glasses, all that, all, all, all of that. They would assume I was the one for the janitor position and not the trader position. So before you go on and keep judging us by the color of our skin, you have no clue what it's like to walk around like it every day. Now me, I choose to not care. I don't wear it as a burden because I know who I am. I know what my ancestry is. I know some of the things that my family has done, especially in the South. There, and again, I found this out when I was digging, there is a land, and I'm not going to say where, that is dedicated to my family name. Guess what? We're Black. So I'm done with the race, the race rant, but I can tell you that I'm tired of it. And it starts with the Black community supporting the Black community, then and then everything goes up from there. So let's transition. Music. What am I listening to? Uh, a staple in my music is Kevin Ross. Uh, Kevin Ross Music. I believe that's his IG. You can give him a follow at Kevin Ross Music. Smooth R&B. Beautiful voice. Kevin, if you ever see this, I am still waiting on Midnight Microdose, the full version and first dose, full song. I need that dropped. I, I need that dropped. So if you guys follow him on Instagram, let him know that, you know, his fans are waiting for that. Okay. It's been a while. What else am I listening to? Uh, I'm a huge J. Cole fan. Uh, my Delete Later is still in my playlist. It's still going strong. Also still listening to Kendrick. Uh, I mean, Drake had a hell of a battle. And, you know, I'm of the thought that Kendrick annihilated Drake and Kendrick is getting flagged for annihilating Drake because, oh, Kendrick's taking it too far. Drake had means of Meek Mill at concerts in Philly. I don't want to hear it. All's fair in love and war. Family Matters was a hell of a track, but K-Dot just killed him. Now, an an another song that goes over people's heads, 616 in LA. Dude, if you understand the perspective that Kendrick is coming from, that song is, of course, Euphoria, the Kill Bill references and Euphoria. K-Dot's a genius. I, n I never knew that Kendrick was that deep. Obviously, I like Kendrick from the K-Dot days. When I was working at AT&T, me, Marlo Morgan, we would, would just be banging him, Dom Kennedy, and other artists that people didn't know yet. So that's the other thing I'm listening to. Um, other than that, this week, I've, I've just been listening to Kevin Ross, uh, Kendrick Lamar, some uh, Slum Village, right? Old hip hop, mostly podcasts. Podcasts that I'm listening to. Interverse, I N N E R V E S E, ran by Chance Garten. If you're into spiritual development, that podcast is right up your alley. Chance is amazing. He's an amazing host, amazing at guiding conversations. R&B Money. I'm a. I didn't. I wasn't a fan of Tank as an R&B singer until. R.B. Money came out. I was a Jay Valentine fan because, uh, again, he was smooth, smooth vocals, has a knack for music. So I'm always tuning in to R.B. Money. I also need you guys to get Kevin Ross on there. I know Tank gave Kevin a shout out on the Joe Budden podcast. Just get my guy on there, man. Hmm, what else am I? What other podcasts? Obviously, Trading That. I've been tuning in the Trading That when there's something that piques my interest. But being on this side as a trader, I, I can listen and be like, I don't like that guy. <laughs> but Cam, always love for Cam. Cam is an amazing human being. And I'm glad that his podcast is finally taken off. And here's the other thing. I'm not mentoring any traders be unless Cam convinces me to do it. I was just going to live in my little bubble. Right. But again, there's more inside of me I need to put out. From a human design perspective, me being a line five, it's hard for me to keep information in. So again, I have to push the collective by teaching what I know. I think that's going to wrap it up because I don't want to edit a long ass video. Um, you guys have a great weekend. I'm going to attempt to edit this and put it up maybe Monday because uh, I have a short, a shorter version of uh, something I did yesterday. Uh, probably going to release that tomorrow. Uh, give me a follow on Instagram at Andre's charts. You can see the it's behind me and be yourself, be yourself. 
tap into your human design. If you need human design coaching, just message me on Instagram. I am going to redo my website. I just haven't cared enough to do it. Just who I am, manifesting generator. If it's not, if it's not lighting my fire, I'm gonna put it off. Oh, uh, follow me on IG. I think I already said that. And I wish everybody success and happiness. Get there in your own way. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Like and subscribe. I keep forgetting. You got to do the YouTube thing on YouTube. I'm not a YouTuber. I just like to talk. <laughs> All right, guys. Cheers. Take care. Thank you.